Hey guys, Joe here. Hopefully you had a good week. Today is Friday when I'm filming this. Who knows when you're seeing it because, hey, if you remember, you'd see this immediately. But because you're not, you have to wait with the rest of the uh, general public. You can be special, help support the channel, and get early access to my videos. Now that the e-bagging's out of the way, let's talk about what we're here to see today. Today I borrowed a gun from Liberty Arms. They're my primary lending source, so check them out. Harrisonburg, Virginia. Google them. I can't link them. Good people, and they try to get all the new stuff, and that will allow me to show you some of the new stuff, such as the P50 you saw last week, and the GX4, and today's firearm, which is this little guy, the Smith & Wesson CSX. Micro 9 chambered in 9mm. Yes, those are words. However, this one is an all-metal gun. It's also, well, we'll take a look at it in a second. Comes in a cardboard box, as many Smith & Wesson do. Inside you have a gun lock, a manual, a bag that your gun comes in, a spare magazine, which is nice to see and required at this price point. TLDR, $550 to Liberty Arms. Not sure if anybody else is jacking the price up. They really shouldn't because it's pretty expensive for a small carry piece. It's in the same range as a 365 with an optics cut or a Springfield Hellcat. And yes, so anyways, let's take a look at the firearm proper. This is a double stack 9mm Micro 9, so it's very easy to conceal. I'm four foot seven, so the fact that I can conceal it is pretty good. Obviously, I'm not four foot seven. I'm slightly taller than that. Uh, this one does have a few party tricks. Number one, it's all metal. It's on the aluminum frame, steel slide, a little bit of plastic coating here on the side, but it's overall aluminum. Uh, the back strap is plastic because it's removable. Uh, it is a hammer fired gun, hammer fired micro nine. Uh, not since like the 938 and a couple others have you seen a hammer fired small 9mm, so it's nice to see Smith & Wesson making one. It is also mostly ambidextrous. It has an ambidextrous external manual safety and slide lock slide release. does not have an ambidextrous mag release. You can swap it though if you are primarily a left-handed shooter. Uh, manual safeties are good for small carry firearms, especially hammer fired ones. That way you can carry it cocked and locked. What that means is you load your mag in, you rack your slide, load around into the chamber, at which point your gun would then be live. You pop up the safety, leaving the hammer back. You can manually drop the hammer by grabbing it and pulling the trigger. That is not something I recommend, especially since the hammer is inset. So just rack it, lock it and put it in your holster. This is nice too, because you can also feel it if it's grabbing on something so that you can stop yourself from accidentally discharging it. It does still have a trigger safety as well. So you do have two levels of security. Again, some people hate the external safety. I think in these micro nines, it's a good idea to have. So yeah, especially for a novice shooter, it's best to have an external manual safety. Don't care what you say. Well, what if you forget to sweep it off? That's why you go to the range and practice. That's why you sit at home and you dry fire. You put it in your holster empty, empty, with the hammer back, engage the manual safety. Practice when you draw. When you come up, you just sweep it with your thumb because you need to adjust your grip anyways because you're pulling straight up. Drop it. I'm a 1911 guy, so I pretty much, as soon as I pull and start presenting, it should become second nature for you. And if it's your primary carry piece, you need to know it intimately anyways. Magazines, this is the 12 rounder. You can see it has a slight extension on the base pad. This is the 10 rounder, it's flush. With the 10 rounder installed, it's a little bit short for my hand, but I could definitely handle it. Nine mil is not a super hard bark. However, and you can see it's a drop free magazine, with the 12 rounder, it fits perfectly in my hand. I can actually maintain a good grip and the gun is wide enough that I don't feel like I would lose control of it. I'll have to find a video of me shooting the LC9 and freaking out so much I dropped the mag. Some guns I don't like, believe it or not. Uh, pretty easy to see, three dot sights. Uh, I probably would prefer just a high vis front and blacked out rear. These are non light. Uh, reflective. They're not night sights. They're just three dots. So you might want to consider changing that. They are dovetailed in. I'm sure Smith & Wesson has stuff already or they're working on it. Small loaded chamber 
coal here so you can see the back of a round black gun black top so it should make it easy to see you'll also see they put striations on the top of the slide that's interesting on a small gun like this uh, it, but it is something i would expect on an expensive small gun this is anti-glare serrations as they say uh, in bright light situations supposedly it would help you keep a uh, better sight picture not as necessary on such a small slide five six seven inch guns it's more helpful but it's nice to see it's there integrated beaver tail and that's integrated into the grip frame it's not part of the back strap that's nice because it does prevent hammer bite smaller gun some people have um, much more bigger hands than i do again as big as i am at five foot one uh, I don't have to worry about hammer bite or slide bite, but some people do. It's nice to have a little protection. And yeah, I keep joking and saying I'm five foot four, but I'm actually five foot five. Uh, front strap serrations are cut into the gun or milled into the gun. That's nice to see. Yeah, it's a plastic covered aluminum. So sorry, guys. I keep backtracking what I keep saying, but it's kind of weird because of the way this gun is put together. It's, it's cool, but it's weird. So you can see down in there, it's a plastic coating over the metal. So you can see the metal inside the, the magwell a little bit. Yeah, it's, it keeps throwing me off. I do apologize. Third time I filmed this. Uh, trigger pull. Pretty decent for a single action. However, it does have one major issue. Well, I say major if you're going to be in a panic situation and you're just going to be slapping the trigger, you'll never notice it. But in fine movement, if you're somebody that rides your reset, You'd think that was a reset. Nope. That's your reset. Don't know what it's doing inside. There's a false detent. I think that's the way the spring is set up for the trigger bar, but it gives you a false reset click. And you can hear it no matter how fast I go, it makes the same noise. So it's not like a production line issue. It's not a, this is gonna break in issue. This is a trigger thing. So if you're trying to go accurate shots, you may get a false reset. 99% of the buying public, when they buy this for self-defense, are not gonna give two hoots about it. But if you are one of the few that likes to ride your reset, you're gonna get some missed shots or misfires or non-fires because it's not a misfire if it doesn't actually drop the hammer. Uh, the front and rear slide serrations are pretty good. Uh, Smith & Wesson does pretty good slide serrations the way they cut them and they almost run over each other makes it extra grippy So someone with hands like mine, I can still grab it Yeah, that's arthritis and nerve damage for you uh, External extractor here on this side and it uses a chamber lockup pretty standard stuff. What do you say we take it apart? Okay, well, that's gonna bring us into issue number two number one. I consulted the manual number two it's still not enough. Number three, this is a $550 gun that does not include the tool that's necessary to take it apart. Let's start with the first problem, which is the gun itself. As you can see, you have your slide lock slide release spot. And immediately behind it, you see that other notch. Well, because of the construction of this gun, you would think much like a 1911, that your takedown would be there at the back of the slide lock slide release. You'd be completely wrong. It's actually at the front of the slide lock slide release. However, the notch that you're supposed to line up is inset into almost the slide of the gun instead of on the outside of the slide rails. It's almost on the inside, and you'll see it when I pop it out. So you can't actually see it to line it up. CZ gets around this by putting marks on their slide and frame where you need to be. Even if you just did it back here, like CZ does, that would be beneficial. But nope, but since they do it like this, only thing you can do is grab a punch, which is required, or a pen, like I'm using, and force the slide lock out until you can get it into position. Now, I've taken it apart three times. That's why it came apart easy for me. It will be the same for you. The more you take this gun down, the easier it will get. However, again, 
$550 gun, they should include the tool that you need. 500 and up guns like um, 1911s at Kimber, $700 gun, they give you a bushing tool. It's a $2 part. They need to include that. Taking a look at this, as I said, the takedown notch indicator is very small and it's inside the slide. So you can't actually see it. It's a minor nitpick, but it's a nitpick nonetheless, something you should be aware of. If you're a novice firearm owner, you've never taken guns apart on the regular, it can be annoying. Or if you're trying to field strip it and you don't have like a bull nose or a round nose bullet, because you're carrying hollow points, you can't use a bullet to take it down. You're gonna have to use something to take it down. I just, they can avoid it by putting two notches and providing the tool. So $2 extra and mark the slide. Simple repair, simple fix. I'm probably gonna actually tag Smith & Wesson in this video. I'm sure they've already heard it, but that's an annoying thing that needs to be fixed. Once you've done that, it's a hammer fire gun, no need to pull the trigger. Uh, let's take a look at the frame first because it's actually pretty interesting. Like I said, up in here, this is all aluminum. Up here, this is all aluminum. This is aluminum, but it's also coated, so it threw me off, like an HK does. HK actually coats their frame rails uh, with plastic, which is why I didn't buy one, because I'm an idiot, thought it had plastic frame rails, and now I regret it, because it was a P30L, or a P30, uh, wasn't an L. It was a law enforcement one, though. But yeah, full-length slide rails, that's good, or guide rails, that's good. It aids for stability for the slide. Some people, again, don't care, but I think it does actually help. Very simple internals here, trigger, trigger bar, safeties on either side. When you pull the trigger, it makes that weird noise, drops a sear, and puts the hammer forward. I'm not pulling the trigger on an untopped gun. Taking a look at the slide, it looks like a lot of standard Micro 9s. Single captive guide rod spring, that may come back to bite it in the end. Who knows, I haven't shot one yet but I've noticed guns of this size with double nested springs tend to shoot a little bit softer. Pretty short barrel, you will see that it uses a link because of the way the slide lock slide release goes through it, it's necessary. Uh, but overall, fully functional in that respect. It's John Moses' Browning's earlier design, so it works well. And it uses the front of the ejection port or the slide port, chamber port, whatever you want to call it, to lock up simple and easy. Inside it's very simple. You have a firing pin block back there and then you can see that it's nicely finished. There are the ubiquitous mysterious dots in there. It's manufacturing codes and dots for that uh, unless you know exactly what they mean. You're never going to be able to do anything with it but it's nice it's there so a future historian can tell Rick Harrison how much it's worth. Field stripped it's only five parts. Good. It's annoying to field strip. Bad. Uh, it will get easier over time. Good. Uh, the fact that you have to wait for it to get easier. Bad. I don't make these videos to be gaslighting you. I don't make this to blow the smoke up the ass of Smith & Wesson and hope that someday they'll send me free guns. I don't give a crap about that. I want you guys to look at this as if you were the first time buyer of a gun. People that come into the store and say they've seen my videos come in because they're doing research. They're not trying to see somebody else be Shooter McGraw and being the best gun man in the world. They come to the store and they say they saw my videos because I go through all this with you and I don't hide the flaws. So yeah, if Smith & Wesson is your favorite company and you're feeling butt hurt because I just called them out for doing something slightly idiotic, sorry. If they improve it, this gun becomes not only recommended, but encouraged. So let's go ahead and put it back together. Take your barrel, flip it upside down. By the way, I've already scratched this gun in like four locations, four locations, because I've had to use a screwdriver or a pen, or I've tried to force things apart, or I smacked the table. And, and it's just slightly annoying, you know what I mean? Sorry, little ranty, rant over. The guide rod is very easy to replace. Some guns, it's a little bit stiffer. This one, nope, you just kind of slot it down. Make sure that it's horizontal and not vertical. Otherwise, the gun will not go back together right. As you can see, it comes back together very easy. You do need to pull it back a little bit. You're going to put the pin through the hole. It puts the pin through the hole if it wants to go to wherever. And then push it in. It takes a little bit of force. You heard the loud snap. But once you do that, go ahead and make sure the gun still works. 
nice that it doesn't have a magazine disconnect. Uh, I'm trying to remember, there was another small gun that just came into the store, and if I remember, I'll make another short video. But it's supposed to be a high-end gun and add a magazine disconnect. Yeah. Anyway, personal protection, you're panicking, you might not get the round, the mag all the way seated, and, you know, the gun doesn't work. That would, that would, that would, that would ruin your day. Overall, though, this one gets a solid B from me. Uh, I would recommend it because it has a little bit of weight and it has manual safeties and it's ambidextrous and it's double stack and it's hammer fired. It trips a lot of the right boxes for me. The negative being the takedown as well as the false reset. Those I can live with. They're just annoying. So this gets a solid B. If you're definitely looking to get one, you should call Liberty Arms, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Tell them you want one. If it's not in stock anymore, they can order you one, but it's a new release gun. It's going to be hard to find, and who knows, maybe your local guy has one, but they're charging 700 bucks. You call us, we'll ship it to you, and then you just pay your regular FFL transfer fee. Uh, that's it. I'm out of here. I have to go and actually return this to the store so that one of you lucky some guns can buy it. So leave me a comment, leave me a message. I know it got a little bit preachy in there, but you're just going to have to deal with that because number one, one take, Hickok, and only a couple other people I know do that. Number two is I want you, the potential consumer, not Mr. G.I. Joe with 12 million rounds sitting in his safe but goes and buys every box he can see anyway. I'd rather have you guys that are relatively new to the firearms world if I miss something, please feel free to leave a polite comment. If you want to be angry, make angry face on the interwebs, Mr. Cool Ash Troll. Don't care, I'm just going to block you. So, anyway, I'm out of here. Let me know if you guys own one, how it shoots. If it's here long enough or if one comes in used, I will take it out and shoot it. This has been Joe, this is JP Tech, and as I lean forward to say goodbye, I will talk to you later.